Hi guys, so today let's talk about concave lenses and about eye, eyesight and uh, glasses. So here you have a diverging lens. Okay, it's also called a concave lens. So physical property will be that the lens is always thinner here at the center and thicker at the edge. So if you take two prism here, like the opposite than you do for a converging lens, so top to top, you see rays coming parallel here will be diverging because of the refraction that happened in, inside those prism. So we can design a diverging lens this way. So that would be the kind of lenses I'm wearing, for example, for um, because I cannot see far, so I'm, I'm short uh, sighted. So with those type of lenses, rays coming parallel, so from uh, an object really far away, are going to diverge and they seem to come, all those rays here seems to come from a point here, we call that the focal point, and this is a focal line. So we're going to use we're going to use the thin lens equation. The focal length will be negative, and the image is always virtual. So the distance image lens will also be negative. So this is called a negative lens as well. So let's look at some uh, simulations here. So we, I think I'll already show you this. Here you have a beam or bundle of rays. If I have something like this, okay, that works. Okay, that's going to be diverging because it's thinner here than it is there. If I do that, that's going to work as well. You see it's thinner here and thicker there. Maybe I can take two of them trying to make like a concave lens here and I take this one here something like this back to back and I have built myself a um, converging lens a uh, diverging lens sorry okay uh, I could also take like two prism two prism here like this, and I should get also diverging lens. It's a diverging lens, right? You can make it like this. It's not great, but that's how it works. So now let's take the simulation here. It's a fantastic simulation. Now you go and choose the concave lens. Now, the first thing you see is that you always get a virtual image. That means the image here cannot be displayed on the screen. The rays here that go through the lens will be diverging. It's going to spread out like, like it's coming from the image. But you see the ray here, the light do not reach the image. So it's a virtual image. You can see it because you have your own lens here. So you have a liquid and you have the, the pupil here. You, you have the lens here that will make those rays here contract, uh, converge again. And then you can see the virtual image. So the glasses, and I'm going to upload the demo, the glasses that I have, because I'm short-sighted, uh, are I have here concave lenses, so it's very thick here at, at the edge, very thin at the center. And if I look through them, looking at uh, the screen here, I see the image will be smaller, but it's going to be virtual because it's formed here between my glasses and, and, the, and the object. And I cannot display it on the screen. So you, I can, I'm sure you can find someone around you wearing glasses because of the myopia. 
and and you can uh, you can experiment on your own. So the object, when it's placed really really far away, so really far away, meaning at a distance very large relative to the focal distance, the rays are going to come almost parallel, and the image will be very tiny at the focal point here. Okay, so if I was able, I don't know if I can, I cannot move the the lens here. If I if I was able to put this really really far away, all the ray here will be parallel, and the image here, the virtual image, will be at the focal at the focal point. As the object gets closer, you see that the virtual image is still behind the lens, so it, it's on the same side, same side that um, as as the object. So that distance here is going to be negative, but it's inside the focal distance. Okay. So the, the virtual image that you get here is always inside the focal distance here. So I can get closer and I'm gonna make it bigger. Now, interestingly, if, if you get, and that's how we can um, estimate the focal length of a concave, uh, the focal distance of a concave lens or diverging lens or negative lens, when, when the object, so if, if I take my glasses here and I look at the keys on the keyboard, when I see the keys half the size of, of the real size, that's going to be because I, uh, that's going to be here because that's going to be the focal distance, right? So if you look through those glasses, you look at the keys of, of the computer and you see the virtual image being half of, of the real object, which are the keys, then you know it's going to be the focal distance. So if this is half of that, you know that your object is at the focal uh, point. Then you can go inside the focal distance. It does not change. The image is going to be a little bit larger, but still inside that um, inside that distance here. Okay, so I can take many. So you see, there is a curvature here. There is a curvature. If I increase the radius, okay, so I make it thinner here. You see what effect it has. It's going to increase the focal. It's going to increase the focal um, distance here, right? But still, if it's very far away, that's going to go to the focal point. If it's at the focal point here, the 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 size is going to be half. So if you get a thinner lens, that means it's not as strong. It doesn't refract as much. If you decrease the radius, you see it getting it's getting thicker here, and it's a stronger stronger lens. Okay, so you see you always miss some beams here. So if I increase the size, what it's going to do? It's going to make the the image more luminous. But interestingly, even if I make it really small, really small, so I only catch a little bit of light, I, I still I still have an image here, except it's going to be very dim. Okay, so that's that's how it works. So a ray, the principal ray, you there are three of them, and you use them if you want to trace the image. So one ray, which is interesting, is one ray that comes parallel to the uh, optic axis, and it's going to diverge like it's coming from the focal point here. A ray that wants to go through the focal point here, so the secondary focal point, it's going to come out parallel to the axis. And a ray here that is going through the center is not going to be deflected. So you only need two of them to, to take the intersection and to trace your image. So this is called a ray diagram.
Okay, so if I go back to my slide, you can see the ray diagram here, um, somewhere here. Yes, so a ray that is parallel to the to the axis here, it's going to be diverging, like it's coming from a focal point there. A ray that is going seems to want to go to the secondary focal point. It's coming out parallel to the axis. And a ray that goes for the center is not diffracted. So you need to know, you, you only need two of them, like the orange and the red, for example. You need two of them to, to make, uh, to trace, to find the position of your image. And again, the image that you get is always virtual and it's going to be inside the focal distance. Okay, uh, rays that are parallel here will spread out. So that's why it's called the diverging lens, also called the concave. So remember that it makes like a cave here. So when you're going to use the fin lens equation, you're going to say the focal length is negative and the distance to the object is also negative because it's going to be on that side. So um, the other thing I forgot to tell you is that when you are using the um, Finland's equation that we, we, we work on last time, it's written somewhere, when you, when you use that equation here, when you use this equation here, it's an approximation. It's supposing, you are supposing that the rays here coming from the object are not uh, making a very large angle. So you can look at your textbook and you can look at the proof, you know, the derivation of this equation. And to get that equation, you have to suppose that this angle is not too large. Okay, if, if you take it too large, then, then it, you are not going to you get you're going to get something uh, fuzzy. Okay, it's not um, it's not very clear. So you have two issues with that. So it's just an approximation. So I don't know have a slide coming up about that. Yeah. So it's not, it's just an approximation because you see the ray don't focus at one single point. Okay, so we suppose that we are not, the rays are not far away from the optic axis. Okay, Thanks. it's called the spherical aberration. And you also have chromatic uh, uh, aberration. So another issue, is that blue tend to refract more than red, so it doesn't focus at a single point. So the way to fix that, you, you have ways to fix it. So we make great glasses. So it's just a parenthesis that the fin lens uh, equation um, is, is just an approximation. So when we get to the algebra, focal length, is positive for a converging lens. Focal length is negative for a diverging lens. The object, the distance to the object is positive if the object is to the left of the lens, and it's negative if the object is to the right of the lens. The distance to the image is positive for a real image, and it's negative for a virtual image. Because virtual means that you're going to get the image on the same side as the object. If you have a magnification which is positive, that means the image is upright. If it's negative, it means it's inverted. If it's greater than one, that means enlarged. If it's smaller than one, it means it's uh, reduced. Okay? So here it's a chromatic aberration. You see that it doesn't uh, focus at the same point because blue is more refracted than red. And here you have a spherical aberration because uh, if, if you 
if you use those rays here at the edge, it's not going to be in focus. So the equation that you are using, it's only true if the rays here are close to the optic axis or if it makes like a small angle here, right? When it doesn't, when it's not parallel. So when the rays are not parallel, you have the object here, you are just considering small angle here. So what you can do to fix that, you can just take, consider this part here of the lens, and you can put like a mask here and a mask there. You see here, it doesn't focus at the same point. So they, they have to work very well on the curvature of, of the lens. So that's why those, those that, that I'm wearing are very expensive. Okay, that was just a parenthesis here. Let's do some problems. So you can pause the video and, and try to do them on your own. So here they ask you how far is the image. So how far means you want to find D sub I. So the distance between the lens and the image. Uh, so the image, that's going to be the image. So it's a lamp, 35 centimeters away from the lens. So from, from the lens, so that's going to be here, that's going to be uh, D sub O. And the focal length here is given. So it's positive. Because it's positive, that means we know it's a converging, it's a converging lens. And you see that D sub O is greater than the focal distance. So that means that the image, the image is real. So it means it can be displayed on a, on a screen and then 20 and 20 is 40, so it's not going to be enlarged. Uh, yes, so, oh, yes, it is going to be enlarged, right? Because D sub O is smaller than twice the focal length, right? Because 35 is smaller than 40, so it's inside, it's inside twice the focal length, so you know it's going to be enlarged, right? We, we talked about that last time. If you take a converging lens, and if you are at exactly twice the focal distance, the size will be the same. Here, the, the, the object and the image, and if you are inside, it's going to be enlarged. And it should be inverted, okay, it should be upside down. So that's what we expect to have enlarged and um, inverted. Okay, so let's do the math. So one over D sub I plus one over 35 equals one over 20. So if I keep everything in centimeters, I, I don't need to convert uh, anything. I can stay in centimeters. So I have uh, one, one, one over D sub I equals one over 20 minus one over 35. So I'm going to do that with 20. Take the reciprocal minus 35. You take the reciprocal. Okay. And you take the reciprocal again, and you get about 47. So D sub I equals 47. So magnification, it's going to be minus the distance to the image over the distance to the object. So that's going to be minus 47 over 35. So 47 divided by 35, and you get 1.33. Okay, so the factor here will be a minus 1.33, okay? 
Okay, so if the size, for example, is H, and H, let's say it's a lamp. So I don't know, lamp, maybe it's going to be what, uh, uh, 25 centimeter. H prime is going to be minus 25 times 1.33 centimeter. So that will be, for example, if you are using a projector, okay, you, you're going to get enlarged image, which is real. It's real, okay? So if you are asked to do a ray diagram, you do the optic axis first, then you have your converging lens here, okay? And then you have your uh, focal length, it's 20, so uh, let's say 10, 20, that's going to be 40, so that's uh, between, between here and there, it's uh, 40, sorry. That's going to be 20. That's going to be 20. So that's a focal length. And um, let's take you have an image here. So it should be here. No, that's uh, 20, 40. So it's going to be here. So here you have your image here at uh, 35, 20, 30, 40. So that's going to be um, no, a li little bit further away, right? So that's going to be, I forgot what I was doing. So 20, this is uh, 10, 20, 30, 35. So let's say the image is here. So let's do ray, um, ray diagram, ray tracing here. So a ray that will go here parallel, it's going to go through the focal point here. And a ray that goes through the center here is not going to be deflected. So what I get here is a larger image by 30%, the, 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 the height is y prime, here is y, and the distance here is about 47 centimeter. And you get real, it's a real image. Okay? Okay, so next one, let's see, new, so there is a book, it's called, yeah, it's another book for you, it's called the EV Physics, The it's a prep book, and the publisher is, I think it's, no, I think it's Kaplan. It's, it's, a, it's a good summary of all physics, al algebra-based. So how far, so how far, so again, we want to find d sub i. So that's going to be the focal length. And you see it's positive. So if it's positive, it means it's a converging lens. So it's converging lens. And now we have 12 centimeters of d sub o. So it's a converging lens, but you see that a D sub O, which is the object, is smaller than the focal length, okay? Because that 12 is smaller than 20. So that means we expect a virtual image. So if the image is uh, virtual, we expect to have the distance to the image to be negative, and we accept we expect to have an upright image. Okay, so let's do the math. If we do one over d sub i plus one over twelve equals one over twenty, so you go d sub i equals one over twenty minus one over twelve. 
you solve for it and you get uh, d sub i equals, I think, minus 30 centimeter. So it means it's negative. So if it's negative, it means it's a virtual, virtual image, right? So you can have your lens here. You have to do a better job. It's hard to draw. So here we have about, uh, let's say we have 20 here. And the image now is inside. So that's going to be 10. So this is 20. So that's going to be 10. So it's going to be somewhere here. So a parallel ray seems to come from here, like this. And a ray that goes through the center is not, is not uh, deflected. So that's, that's it. this is my object here. And when they meet here, that's going to be your image. Okay, so the image here that was 12. Okay, let's start again. Has has to be minus 30. Let's, let's try to make sure I did the math correctly. So it's 20 to the minus 1, minus 12 to the minus one, and you do it to the minus one, so it's gonna be minus 30, so the image will be here. So I think I didn't trace it properly, let's try that again. Or we can take, um, if you take the here, you see the, it's gonna be there, Inside, it's going to be inside, okay, here. Yeah. Inside, so it should be further away. Parallel, it should go this way. Okay, that was my mistake. The ray here should go undeflected. So let's look at the ray diagram again. So a ray that comes parallel here. Oh, it's a, it's a converging lens. That's why I did a mistake. Okay. I was still in the concave lens. Okay, I see. So let's start over. So you have your... Um, so it's good to have to remember what you are supposed to get. So that way uh, you can identify your mistake. I was thinking concave, but it's a convex lens here. And let's say, let's say this is 20. Okay, so that's gonna be 20. That's the uh, focal lens. And my object here is somewhere there. So that's my object here. And it's a converging lens. Okay, not a diverging lens. So something, a ray that comes here, has to converge, so it has to go this way. And I can extend here. And a ray that goes through the center here is not being deflected, so I can extend. And where they meet here, that's gonna be my image. Okay, that's why. So it's good that I have made this mistake. <laughs> Just to show you that you can uh, you can fix it because you know that the image should be farther away and it's it's shown here by the computation so that distance here is about thirty centimeter okay Okay. And uh, if you can you can go back to the ray tracing here. Um, you see, if you have a ray coming parallel here, it goes to the focal secondary focal point. A ray that goes through the center is not going to be 
be deflected. A ray that goes for the primary here is going to come parallel. Okay, so keep those in mind. At least keep two in mind. Okay, so number three. Uh, number three, we did, we didn't. What? Okay, number three. So what focal length? So now we see that focal length, that's what we are trying to find. You want a virtual image, virtual image. So that means that D sub I has to be negative. So 12 centimeters from the lens. So that means D sub I equals minus 12. It's negative because it's given here that it's virtual. And the object here, so D sub O equals 35. So if I use the fin lens equation, which is again an approximation, I have 1 over 35 plus minus over 1 over 12 equals 1 over the focal length. So if you do that with your calculator, you have 35 to the minus 1, minus 12 to the minus 1. And then you take again here, and you get minus 18. So F equals minus 18 centimeters. So we get a negative focal length. So that means the length is negative. And what does it mean? It means that it's a concave, it's a concave, and it's a diverging 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 lens okay so you can uh, make a drawing be, be careful um, so we have a diverging lens that's a symbol for diverging here diverging lens negative lens concave lens the the focal length we don't know but we see that the image is inside the image is inside the um, the image 12 is smaller than the distance to the object and and that's what we get with a concave lens okay it's not like the here the image is away from the object here But then it can comes inside. But if you have a concave lens, you see that the image is always inside the focal distance. So the focal we have what does it say? The virtual image. So we have um, the object is at thirty five, and then we have that the image is at twelve. And um, we find that the focal length here is, so that's going to be the focal length, that's going to be 18. The image is at 12, so that's going to be 12. And the object here is 35. Sorry. So if, if you have the object here, you see that the ray, a ray would come, um, so you can do the ray tracing, right? So a ray that comes parallel here, parallel here, it's going to diverge. A ray that goes through the things here, it's not going to be refracted. And where the rays meet, that's going to be your virtual image. So that's the object, that's going to be the image. Now, if you do the magnification, so M equals minus the 
the image is going to be minus 12 over the object is 35. So it's going to be positive. So it's an upright image, but it's reduced, right? It's reduced by a factor of 12 divided by 35. So it's going to be 0 0.34. Okay, so almost one third. It's going to be one third. Okay, so remember you have here, and it's good to play with the simulation, but the ray that comes parallel, it's going to spread away because it's diverging, like it's coming from the focal point. The ray that goes through the center is not def uh, being diffracted, diffracted, refracted refracted, sorry, so where the mid, that's going to be where your image is. So to, to have a ray diagram, you just need ray number one and ray number three. Okay? Okay, so here we have Last one. So last one, find the size of the book, the image of a book. So they want to find y prime so that's the size of my image um 80 centimeter high so that means that's going to be 18 until 18 centimeter plus 30 centimeter from a diverging lens okay so that means the focal length f is negative so minus 20 place 30 centimeters, so that means that's going to be the distance of the object. So to find the size, um, now find the size of the object, of, of, of the book. So that means y is 18 centimeters and you are looking for y prime. Or I can call it h, the size, the size of the object is 18 centimeters and I'm trying to find the size of the object, of the image. So, so first I have to find d sub i, so 1 over 30 plus 1 over the distance between the image of the lens, d sub i equals minus 1 over 20. Okay, so you can take your calculator, you have a minus here, so minus 20, take the reciprocal here. Okay, so I have minus 1 over 20, minus 30 to the minus 1, okay? And then you take the reciprocal because you get 1 over d sub i, so take the reciprocal again, and you get minus 12. So d sub i equals minus, minus, because it's virtual, okay, so it's a virtual image. So hy, or hi, the image, the size of the image over the size of the object equals minus d sub i over d sub o, so that's going to be minus, minus 12, so it's always reduced over 30. So you get 12, 12 divided by 30, and it's 0, 0 0.4. Okay, so the size of the image equals 0 0.4 times 18. 0 0.4 times 18, forget about the negative sign, so it's going to be 7.2. Okay, so we have the image at 12, 
and the object at 30. So 30 and 12, you have a ratio of three, right? So it means if it's a concave, so this, this is one, this is one, two, three, about that. Okay, so you have the size here, 0 0.4. So this is 40% of this, 40% about. Okay, so it's always good to go back to this uh, simulation. So here I have, um, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, it's a playlist I have found on YouTube. And it's it's nice because it has it's called uh, physics optics if you want to write that down and it goes it's a very nice uh, playlist about optics also it's a very good complement here if you have a lot of problem he's going for so I highly recommend this playlist here if you need more practice. And I will also post more practice at the end of this uh, series of video. Okay, so converging, also called positive lens, also called um, convex lens. It works only if the rays are not too far from, from the uh, optic axis. Or, or if the angle here it makes, if you go from the object, it's not reaching the edge here. So the angle between the optic axis and the beam here is not too large. So this is a concave lens, negative lens, diverging lens. We're going to see next, in the next unit, that a concave mirror so concave mirror, you, you see it make a, a cave, will behave like a converging lens. So this is actually a converging mirror, and it's a concave. Now, a con con convex mirror here, convex mirror is actually a diverging mirror because it's behaving like a concave lens. So whatever you do, with a converging lens, you can do it with a concave mirror. Whatever you do with a diverging lens, you can do it with a, a, a convex mirror. Okay, so we're going to see that next. So about your human human um, eye, we have we have two lenses here close to each other. We have the real lens here with muscles attached here, and here we have some kind of liquid that will also behave like a lens. So most, most of the refraction, like 80% of the refraction happens because, because of that liquid here that we have there. So this is also important because we, thanks to those muscles attached here, we can, we can change the curvature of the lens, okay? We can make it, we can adjust when we are reading, for example. So that means that, uh, remember, a lens has a curvature. So if I take a converging lens, it's a, it has a curvature. You, you can make it thinner, thinner lens, thicker lens. So we can increase the radius of curvature, we can decrease. That's what your muscle does. So we can adjust, okay? We can adjust for object. Um, if the object is placed far away or if the object is placed close to the eyes. Okay, so for example, here we have an object which is very far away. So the muscle don't uh, contract here. So, so it doesn't make the, the lens here too thick, far thicker, it doesn't make it thicker. And the rays come almost parallel and um, the object here, it's going to be a real object. It's going to be upside down and it's going to be formed here on the retina. So this is our screen, okay? The real image is going to print itself on the retina. And here you have some kind of sensors, you have cones, and, um, and this is connected to the, 
op optic nerve that goes to your brain and your brain has been trained to, to put the image upright again, okay? So if the object now is very close to your eye, the muscles are, are gonna uh, play, they, they're gonna contract, and, and they, they will make that lens thicker, and you can still see the image on the retina. So when we get older, those muscles get weaker and they cannot adjust well and we cannot read things very close. So we need um, uh, glasses. So that's going to be a normal eye. So normal eyes, rays coming parallel here will be focusing here. That's kind of a dive, uh, converging lens. All the rays will converge here on, on the retina. That's an optic nerve. Now, if you have an eye uh, like uh, like me, so if you have myopia, so you you cannot see far, so you are uh, nearsighted, so it's called nearsightedness. So the the eye is kind of squeezed vertically here. It's it's not like nicely spherical. So that means when I try to look something very far away, the object here cannot reach the retina. Okay, so my, 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 not the object, the image here is from here. It doesn't help because here I don't have sensors to collect the image. The sensors are here. So what I get here, if you extend the ray, I, I see something fuzzy. So that's why we need a concave lens. It's what I have here to bring back the image further away on the retina, so I'm able to see. So this is called near sight sightness. Now the opposite is far sightness. So that will be people um, either they 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 are uh, far sighted, or it happens when we get older. So in that case, it can be explained either the eye is squeezed squished. In, in this direction. So now you know the rays are parallel and the image will be formed here instead of being formed there. Okay, so now you need a converging lens. Okay, so it can bring the image back from, uh, from here to the, to the retina thanks to a converging lens. Or it happens also when you are old, those muscles here attached to the pupil, it cannot contract, so it cannot make this figure, so you cannot adjust. So you, you need those reading glasses that, that are a few dollars, that are very cheap. So that's how it works. So near sightness, sightness um, actually there's an app here. So let's say this is the normal eye, so all the ray coming parallel, so you're looking very far away, the image will be formed on, on the retina. So I, I don't need glasses. If you are far sightedness, far, far, uh, far sighted, so you cannot you cannot read close, you see that it's uh, the image will be here. So we need convex lens to bring it back here. You see, this is missing, so it's going to be fuzzy. You are not able to read clothes. You cannot read the newspaper when you get older. So you need those cheap glasses, okay? And le le less or more strong, so it bring back the image here. If you are like me, which is nearsighted, so I can see very well close, but I cannot see far, it's the opposite. So the image is here, and I need to bring it back farther away so I can use a concave lens. So this website here has a great app, very nice simulation. See. Okay. So near sightness, so you have here object which is distant here and um, it's uh, because the eye is squished this in this direction, 
the, the image is not at the right place, so you need a diverging lens to bring it back. So how do we find, how do we make those? How do we find those lenses here? So we, what we do with the measurements by an optician, they're going to find out where is your far point here. That means where can you see up to, okay? So let's say you can see up to that point. So we're going to add a lens here, such as it will make an image, a virtual image here just at that point there. And then you will be able to see. Okay, so to find exactly what's going to be the focal distance, okay, what will be the focal distance of that lens here, we define the far point, so the far, the, the, what, what is the distance at which you can still see. So that will be that distance here. And we try to find a lens such as it will make a virtual image at that point here. And then, then you can see with your lens there. So I think I have a problem here. So try to do this one. So this, this point here is the point at which you can see. This point here is located very, very, very far away. So it's infinity. So if you put a diverging lens here, if you put a diverging lens, okay, you, you want that object here to have an image at that point there. You want a virtual image here. So that's going to be infinity, and you want an image here at that point, and that image here has to be virtual. Okay, so it means if you, if you go back to the, um, so you have a concave here, that, that object here is very far away, so you're going to have a virtual image here at the focal, at the focal distance. That focal distance is your, the, the point where, where you can see. So if you, if you want to pause the video and try to find out So it says, a nearsighted person has a far point located at only 521 centimeters from the eye. So 520 centimeters. So that's the point where, where you can see and anything uh, uh, further you cannot see. So that distance here, it's going to be 521 centimeters. Okay. So that distance here, it's going to be. 521 centimeters and then it says the eyeglasses are two centimeters in front of the eye so that means the distance here is two centimeters so that means the distance between here and there that's going to be 519 centimeters okay but here that's going to be where you want to find to have your virtual image because of that object here, because of the lens. Okay, so that lens it's going to make that far away object have an image here, and that image has to be at the focal focal distance of the concave lens. That means the focal distance equals five nineteen centimeters with a minus here. Okay, so to, to find the, the way the way optician they're gonna use that number, they're gonna do they, they're gonna convert in meters, so it's gonna be uh, minus 5.19 centimeters and and they take the reciprocal. So it, they're gonna do 5.19 take the reciprocal. That's that's the numbers they're gonna use. Okay, so zero minus 
that's the number they're going to use. It's not, it's not called here. So they're going to use this number here. And this is called, I should show you. So it's called the uh, refractive power. So you do one over the focal distance, it has to be in meters, and that will be the unit here. Okay, then it's called the refractive power. So that's how, even if you do, if you go to dollar stores to buy those reading glasses, you, you're gonna find, if you want to find the focal length, you have to do one over the number they give you. Okay, so that's the relationship, that's what the opticians uh, use. Okay, so that's that's how we solve those kinds of problems here. So first you find the far point you can see, and then here that point here will be located at the focal focal point of the diverging lens because this is a far away object. So because of the diverging lens. It's going to have an image here at its focal distance or its focal point. So that distance here will be the focal distance. So that's how you solve those kinds of problems. You, you have the explanation here. That slide comes from Cottenell and Johnson again. Now the opposite, if you cannot see close, you see that that, that is the object. Now the image is here. So you want to use a converging lens to bring back the object here, okay? So that will be the nearest point you can see. So you want that lens here to make a virtual image here at that location. Okay, so that will be the image formed by the converging lens. So you have the object because of the converging lens, it's gonna have an image here which is virtual that virtual image uh, will become an object for the, 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 the lens of the eye, and the, op the, the final image will be on the retina. So you can have, you can have problems uh, which, uh, which are also easy. And again, this uh, the slides here I'm showing you, and the problem I'm showing you is coming from the book Johnson and Gottman, uh, which is uh, physics. It's just called physics. So in that case, for example, you could be given that the object here is at 25 centimeters, and let's say you cannot see uh, closer than 50, 50 centimeters, okay? 50 centimeters. That will be the position, so that means you, you can read if the object is here, but you cannot read when it's there, okay? So because you have to use a converging lens, the image will be brought back here at 50. So what's gonna be the focal length of, of the lens? So that's gonna be one over d sub o plus one over d sub i, equals one over the focal length. So that's going to be one over 25. The image is going to be negative. So minus one over 50 equals one over F. So that's going to be negative because it's a virtual image. So it's going to be 25 to the minus one plus to the minus one, it's going to be 0 0.02, so it's going to be 50. Um, the, the focal length, of course, is positive, it's going to be uh, 50, 50, 50 what, 50 centimeters. So if you if um, if you know that so if you know that so you can measure you know I want to read my newspaper here but I can only see it when it's there so you can do those computation then you find the refractive power so p 
equals, it's going to be 1 over 1, 2, so 0 0.5, which is 2. So then you go to a CVS, for example, and you, you buy those, those glasses so you can read. You can read your loose paper, right? Okay, so that's how it works. You, you can do the experiment with someone who knows, you know, for example, who can read the, the newspaper at that distance here, but can read the first distance it, uh, uh, that person can read the newspaper is this one, so you can do the math. And again, you have more problems here in that uh, playlist I, I put somewhere. So I will upload a short demo. Okay, so we talked about that. And we talked about that. Okay, so next time I will talk about mirrors, concave mirror and convex mirror.